lighting. It's the single most expensive part of indoor gardening, so why is it so hard to find good data to boost your knowledge? We're here to change all that. Welcome to Test Lab. <laughs> Test Lab is a new team at Monster Gardens dedicated to testing lights, bulbs, and other associated equipment. Plus, we'll be educating viewers about all the factors involved in buying, installing, and maintaining indoor grow lights. Plus some insight into future technologies. For now, I'm the test master. You can call me Dr. Watt. But before we go any further, a few things you should know. Firstly, I'm not a real doctor. You what? Do you know, not everyone that calls themselves a doctor actually is. Dr. Dre is the name, I'm ahead of my game. Secondly, the accent. Yes, I do part-time work as a Bond villain. But I don't come from the land of scary spiders and snakes. And finally, you should know that the only thing I've ever been good at growing is my hair. Yes, you heard that right. I'm not in fact a master grower, I am a science geek. It's going to be my job to test these fixtures and generate the data, plus create new tests in order to give you gardeners out there the best information possible about your lighting systems. And when you tell me about when you first started testing, I mean, the first test, how bad was it? The first light test was me holding it like this, holding a standard light meter like this, with the, with the <laughs> in front of the camera. The problem was, was that every lamp up until three years ago was tested in lumens. Uh, everybody hears the statement, lumens are for humans. Right. But it's funny because all the lamps were tested in lumens, yet we were not concerned about lumens so much. So our concept was to go and get a PAR meter. We spent $500 or $600 at the time on a yeah. PAR meter. We thought that was expensive at the time. It's a nice uh, meter. Nobody was selling anything like that at Sunlight or Hydro Farm. Uh, so we thought it was a, a nice PAR meter. And it took a, really a light engineer that came in, luckily in a short period of time, it was within a 30 day period, and came in and brought in this fancy tool brought called in the spectrometer. radial spectrometer. Manufacturers use light sphere testing. Uh, why didn't you trust this method? We love the light spheres. Um, ourselves, we pay actually in California, we paid on numerous products that we've tested, third party. We paid California Light Laboratories to do some light sphere testing for us. Uh, they're, they're not that far from us and they do it relatively inexpensive. They just keep the lamp. <laughs> so, right. It's nice information to have at least to cross reference with your other... Data. Exactly, exactly. So the relevance of the light sphere test in relation to a reflector in your garden is two completely different worlds. It does a great job measuring the bulb, but not the relation of the bulb to the actual reflector. So that's why Steve and I knew it was so important for us to do a real world test. As far as light testing, we've really evolved. Uh, we started out just trying to get these results out there to people and we did a, a five point test. Mm -hmm. Many of you may have noticed that um, where we basically take a five by five grid and essentially take the four corners and then the center point. Mm -hmm. And then we realized, um, yeah, we can, people have more than five plants in their, well, in their grow space of a five by five by area. So why don't totally. we do it based upon maybe a sea of green style, which would be maybe 25 points of measure. And it gives us more realistic numbers. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have a bigger average, so it reduces the amount of variables. That exactly. Over the um, last five years, how much money do you think you guys have spent testing? Hour, man hours or just straight raw costs? Both. Uh, this year we've spent about $6,000 um, just in, oh I'm sorry, last calendar year. So last 12 months we've spent about 6,000, not man hours, that's cost of testing. So buying lamps, paying for California light laboratories, upgrading um, little lighting components with our spectrometer and the way that it works with our computer system. Um, but yeah, about $6,000. Our total setup uh, to do the light testing was about $9,000. Um, and that included that this uh, doing outfits to this grow tent. This grow tent um, was actually donated to us by Gorilla Grow Tent. Mm -hmm. um, but we had to make some customizations to it. That with the computer uh, plus the light meter ended up being about $9,000. So just over the last 18 months, we spent about $15,000 to, to do light testing. Um, and to us, it's just an, it's, 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 a con, it's a consequential expense to be able to provide accurate information for our customer base. That interview was back in May, six months ago. Monster Gardens had asked me to review their test procedure to see if there were any improvements that could be made. <laughs> the original test setup was already one of the most accurate real-world tests that existed. 
but with some tweaks, it could be made even better. But before we look at the updates, let's look at the original Monster Gardens test. The main test is housed in a 5x5x8 five by five by foot grow tent that's been sprayed black inside in order to cover the reflective coating. This is so that we only read direct photons from the bulb and reflector and not those bouncing around inside the tent. On one of the vents to the side of the tent is an AC unit to keep the tent cool. 1000 watt bulbs tend to get very hot but again we're also trying to recreate grow conditions. Inside the tent is a 5 foot by 5 foot grid of 25 positions listed sequentially. The test is performed by moving a mounted cosine receptor across all 25 spots in sequence, with a measurement recorded in each space. Think of the cosine receptor as a camera lens from the spectrometer. It's a very, very poor scientific analogy, but it's a good metaphor to get you to understand its purpose. When a reading has been taken for all 25 spots on the grid, the readings are added together, then divided by the total number of spots on the grid. This gives us an average micromole reading across the artificial 5 foot by 5 foot canopy. The cosine receptor, our camera lens, is attached to the spectrometer via this 6.5 foot fiber optic cable which leads out to the tent via one of the vents. Nestled here next to the tent is the Stellanet spectrometer which the fiber optic cable leads into. That in turn is attached to the laptop which is where we take all the PAR readings. <laughs> In the last six months, we've tested every component, cable and screw in order to squeeze every ounce of accuracy out of the test. The aim was to remove as much variability from the test as possible, and factors included positioning of the fixture and positioning of the sensor, conditions including heat, humidity and air pressure, and even electrical grid stability. Of all the factors, the biggest challenge was without doubt the positional variability. This is because the fixtures were hung mainly by sight and the cone sign was also moved mainly by hand. This means that with the old test protocol, the cosine and the light fixture will always be a few millimetres out in variability. We needed a fixed point of reference in order to calibrate all of the other associated systems around it. So, we built a custom floor. With the new customised floor levelled, balanced and bolted into place, we now have a fixed point of reference that we can align all of the various moving components against. The floor, together with a customised cosine receptor mount which you see here, ensures that we have the cosine receptor in the same spot every single test. The other major positional challenge was centering the fixture to the floor. We solved this problem with a laser. A pointer, a laser pointer, aimed across in the roof that marks the center point. This greatly improves the centering of the fixture in the bulb, aligning it more precisely with the grid below. The final challenge left was time control. On the original test, the emphasis was placed on getting a high volume of tests done in a short period of time. However, a number of experiments showed that it takes the cosine receptor at least 10 to 15 seconds to balance its reading once the tent has been closed. This is due to light that is generated externally from the tent being let in when the tent's being opened. It takes around 10 to 15 seconds just for those photons to settle. So to ensure we get the most balanced reading, we leave 30 seconds in between spot tests. This does make the test take a little bit longer, but it's more than worth it for the increase in accuracy. With the other variables that we couldn't do anything about, Throw me a frickin' bone here! Like temperature, humidity, air pressure and power stability, 
Instead of trying to alleviate these factors, what we decided to do is record them and add them to the test results. And so now, with this new test, each base test will record the following parameters. The actual test data we're looking for will measure the 25 measurements from the 5x5 grid, of course, from the fixed height, the canopy average, the uniformity ratio, that's the difference between the highest spot and the lowest spot intensity, the integration time the spectrometer was set to, and a spectral graph. All the other data on the test represents the variables, the air temperature both inside and outside the tank, the humidity again inside and outside the tank, the air pressure on a day, and the voltage and or the wattage draw depending on which type of test and what type of fixture we're using. <laughs> We're going to be releasing the results of our single-ended mega test. This is where we took every 600 and 1000 watt single-ended HPS and metal halide bulb we could get our hands on and tested the hell out of them. After that, we'll be moving on to more advanced lighting technologies, as single-ended bulbs are already considered obsolete in most commercial gardens. So that's all for now. I'd like to say a special thank you to David Perino over at Stonenet for all of his help with our test procedure. If you have any questions, contact us through the Monster Gardens website at monstergardens.com. Otherwise, I'll be back soon with another edition of Test Lab.